Morning and welcome to the Tuesday, March 28th, 2023 Tingsboro School Committee meeting. Please be reminded that these meetings are audio and video recorded. My name is Becky Stanton and I call this meeting to order. We'll start with introductions with Nate. Hi, Nate Marino, student representative. Jeff Bo. Dustin Puma. Mike Woodlock, assistant superintendent. Hi, Mike Flanagan, superintendent. Anthony Tenerell. Ryan McMahon. Daniela Thanis. Good evening, Joe Messina, school business administrator. Please rise for a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will seek a motion to suspend regular meeting and open public hearing on the fiscal 24 budget. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That carries 6-0-0. Are there any members of our audience here to speak about um, the budget during our public hearing? Sounds like a no. Um, well, that's disappointing. <laughs> Mr. Messina, did you have anything to share? Uh, nothing beyond what, uh, what we spoke about last week, Madam Chair. Um, I believe the two numbers that you need to vote on, both the total expenditures for the school for next year as well as the actual school committee uh, budget portion of that figure are on the backup. Great. Uh, Dr. Flanagan, anything before I propose a motion? Uh, I would just like to say that, you know, I appreciate all the hard work, hard work that Mr. Messina put into this. Um, it's been a challenging budget cycle this year. Uh, we appreciate the support and work and collaboration with Town Hall. Thank you to the school committee for your uh, support on this as well. Uh, it's never easy when we talk about uh, not hitting the full number of what we want. But again, I think we're confident that when we open the doors next August, we're going to provide a comprehensive program for all students here in Tingsboro, and we're going to do everything we can to meet the needs of all of our students. So thank you to everyone for your hard work on this. Really appreciate it. Um, and we did have a very in-depth discussion last week um, regarding the budget. Uh, there were no changes to the budget. Um, Ryan, you looked like you wanted to say something. Did you? No, I just no. Oh, okay. looked like that. Okay. All right. There you go. <laughs> all right. So I will um, seek a motion to approve the fiscal 2024 budget as presented in the public hearing with a total school expenditure of $26,161,820 and a school committee budget of $22,847,010. Quick question, do we need to close the public hearing first? Yes. I think we need a motion to we adjourn do. the public hearing first. So moved. Oh, sorry. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That carries 6 zero, 0 So now I'll seek that motion. So moved. Thanks, Ryan. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Aye. That carries 6 zero, 0 Thanks, Ryan. Uh, there was, oh, an, there was no. an A. Oh, there was an A. You're opposed. Oh, there's two nays. There's two nays. So that's 4-2-0. Four, four, okay. um, all right. Approval of... That does carry at 420. Mm -hmm. um, approval of minutes for the March 21st, 2023 school committee meeting minutes. I'll seek a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That carries 600. Uh, citizen time. No citizen time. Nate, you're up. Share the success. All right. Um, shorter than last week. So at TES during the month of March, preschool through grade five classrooms have read eight funny picture books, uh, which sounds enjoyable. At the beginning of April, they will vote and discover the title of the funniest picture book at TES. Mrs. Cavanaugh would like to give a special striped shout out to Mrs. La Rochelle and Mr. Lewis for their book selection. Um, and then also at TES, they have some great offerings for their final round of after school enrichment programs, uh, which includes Telegram, Track, Spring Play Dates, and Spanish. And TES would like to, uh, to thank their staff for offering these opportunities to their students. Um, at the middle school, spring sports have started up and they're enjoying the nice weather outside right now. Um, the spring theater competition is being prepared for at the moment at the school. And then um, there's also a door decorating contest over there that they're doing. Um, they were doing for March Madness, but it's still going on over there right now. And at the high school, 10th um, graders began their ELAM CAS exam today. Um, they'll complete session two tomorrow, and then they'll be taking the math MCAS exam in May. Um, and then THS BioBuilders team 
uh, visited the BioBuilder Learning Lab at Ginkgo BioWorks in Boston. Um, and then while they were there, they performed a bacterial transformation with the DNA plasmid they designed. So that was cool to see them be able to achieve that. And then at the Winter, uh, they had Tingsboro High School at the Winter Sports Awards last week. Um, and so congratulations to all the winter athletes on a great season. And then theater um, competed in the semifinals of the METG competition. Um, although they didn't move on to the finals, multiple students received individual awards for their performance. So congratulations to them. And that's it. Great, thank you. Um, I did skip over correspondence. Uh, Dr. Flanagan? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. In the, uh, in the drive right now, there's a letter from uh, the New England Association of School and Colleges. Every 10 years, NEAS comes and does an accreditation of uh, Tingsboro High School. And uh, they actually are seeking uh, some schools to delay their visit by one year. I think COVID uh, kind of threw their, their visitations into a loop, so they're asking you want to kind of push it off for a year. So uh, Mr. Rogdon did uh, request a, a bump uh, or did say he would support uh, a bumping it back a year, so we did receive approval. So the, the centennial visit from NEASC will be in uh, 2027 at this point, not 2026. So uh, as you know, that is a, uh, it's a lengthy process. It's, it's intense on the, the, the staff here at the school. Uh, there certainly is a cost factor that goes with it, and it's essentially cut it's professional educators around New England that come in and, and audit your school for an entire week and then make recommendations about programming, extracurricular, uh, just everything, every aspect of your school. So it is a comprehensive review. So that'll be in uh, 2027 at this point. Question, Dr. Flanagan. We don't lose any accreditation in that delay, correct? We do not. Thank we you. do not. And that's it. Great. Uh, there is no personnel at this time, and there are also no subcommittee meeting uh, subcommittee discussions at this time. Uh, moving on to unfinished business, the MSBA and teaching and learning update. Great. So we'll go first to the reminder of the calendar. Uh, our next meeting uh, is scheduled for February. Uh, excuse me, April 10th. That will be a tri board meeting at town hall. April 11th will be the next regular scheduled school committee meeting, and we do have a school building committee meeting next week, next Wednesday, and on the 5th. Uh, but that is the uh, upcoming meeting calendar. Keep going, Mr. Woodlock, please. So the MSBA update. I think a picture is worth a thousand words, so I'm going to show you three pictures. So you're getting three thousand words tonight. Demolition started Saturday. Uh, uh, as we talk about the MSBA, we've talked a lot about permitting and costs and everything. Now we get to see some of the actual work taking place. So demolition took place Saturday. As we know, it was supposed to just be the first half to disconnect the uh, middle school from the gym. They were just going to take that first section and leave the pillar there. However, demolition went so well and so quickly that they decided on Saturday to continue the work, and they ended up taking down the entire sky bridge on Saturday. Uh, so that's, uh, that's all very positive. These are just a couple shots of what that looks like. And then on Monday, you can see there, they took the entire exterior wall of the gym, and actually today, they finished stripping out all of the bleachers from the middle school gym as well as all the flooring. So that is down now, that gymnasium is down to concrete. They've pushed it all out, that open uh, hole there, and they cleaned out the entire area. And they began, I think two or three trucks came today to, uh, to cart away the materials. So uh, um, incredible progress yesterday watching that come down, and then uh, today was all cleanup. So we anticipate tomorrow that another section of the school will be coming down. So uh, it's, it's exciting to see uh, the work being done. Uh, it's just another sign of progress towards a new school. So, uh, so that's where we are in terms of MSBA update. Our next meeting is April 5th. Uh, that meeting we'll talk about uh, where the estimates are. We'll talk about 60% uh, completion of design documents. Uh, and we'll get a better sense of where we are as, as a project uh, as a whole. So, so that's the MSBA update. Happy to answer any questions. Just had a question about traffic flow. Um, is that still going smoothly now that we're starting to see construction vehicles on the property? Have we encountered any issues? We really haven't. Um, they kind of they kind of come in and go around the middle school, and they really they own that get, that fenced area. So, in terms of operation in the morning, uh, the only thing we're doing right now is we're putting cones out on the bus loop after um, after 7:30. So the kids uh, that are going back and forth from the middle school to high school, they have a little bit more area to walk. Um, but uh, it's kind of neat. They're all excited to look up and see the, the progress being done and uh, hear the work that's going on. So the, the traffic pattern is working out well. Uh, again, the, the, the main entrance will be closed for the next two weeks until uh, the entire demolition is done. But um, things seem to be, operations seem to be smooth right now. Great. 
And from a noise standpoint, um, how is the noise level and is that impacting the um, school? Yeah, um, you can hear it. Okay. I mean, you, you hear beep, beep, beep all day long. And you can actually, in my office, you can actually feel it when the, when the excavator is taking down walls. Um, but uh, I think it's just something that is part of, uh, part of the process. And I think something that we'll have to get accustomed to. And I think the kids are doing a nice job uh, at the middle school adjusting to it. Some of that work is taking place literally right on top of their classroom. So it, it, it's probably a little bit more difficult there. Uh, and I'm sure that high school students also hear the trucks and, and, and feel the vibrations and, and are somewhat distracted there a little bit. But uh, we'll, we'll do the best we can to, to mitigate that. I think once the demo's down, hopefully it'll be a little bit smoother. Okay. And Dr. Flanagan, the second floor hole in the building, is that going to be blocked? Second floor hole. Where we move the canopy? So the entrance? Yes. The sky bridge? The sky bridge. Yes. That's blocked off. They've already yes. put up the block on it? Sweet. Yep. Right. Any other questions? Dr. Lane, really quickly, I know last week you had addressed um, any concerns folks may have about any um, debris in the air and everything is getting washed down over the weekend. Did they have any blips or was everything all right? Everything's all right. We watch, there, there are two gentlemen out there with hoses. Uh, the entire time, and all they do is water all the construction that's coming up, all the debris that's coming up. Uh, it's amazing. They, that two full-time guys on hoses the entire time uh, to, to keep the mist, uh, uh, the dust down. So it's really impressive. To watch. Thank you. And they're they're monitoring the air quality. <clears throat> they are 24/7. Uh, yeah. And, and again, there's a, there's an on-site person, the supervisor who says if the quality is is impacted at all, they're going to shut the job down. Any other discussion? All right, thanks. All right. All right, I guess it's my turn. So uh, last week I shared with you some examples of some you know, great things that are happening instructionally in our classrooms in each of our buildings that was shared uh, with me by the building administration. So I'm gonna share just a little bit today about what we're doing to support our teachers. Um, so I don't know if you remember this uh, diagram. This is the MTSS blueprint that uh, we utilize to kind of guide us. It's created by the state. Um, so it may seem a little dull and boring to you, but for me, this is exciting. So bear with me. Um, but I wanted to just share this with you because part of what we're doing with our um, our initiatives this year in, in our goals that were set at the school and district levels is we want to make sure that we're doing our part to support what we're asking our teachers and our students to do. And so part of that comes with our scheduled uh, May 16th Professional Development Day, which is really the first day this year where we haven't had outside providers coming in. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but just the ability for us to do something for all of our staff uh, during the same day. Not that we'll do it all together, but on two different campuses at the same day. So um, it's, a, it's really the only one this year that we're fully in control of and able to um, develop and implement uh, what we think we need to do the most to support our staff. And so as you look at uh, our blueprint, you see these things around the outside, those are drivers. And so those in indicate a lot of the things that we have to do as district and building administrators to support our teachers, who then in turn support our students in a tier one learning environment. So the two things we're really focused on are these competency drivers, which is making sure if we're gonna be asking our teachers to be more inclusive in their teaching, their instruction, and their planning, it's incumbent upon us to be consistent with supporting them through professional development um, and on daily feedback and things like that. Uh, the other part is the organizational, organizational systems that uh, we create as leaders to um, make that tiered instruction possible. And so that really falls into professional development. And so just to share with you what we'll be focused on, this is what part of the day is scheduled for right now. So the other part of the day will be organized through buildings individually, determining what they need to do the most. But for our whole staff throughout the district, we'll be focusing two workshop sessions, one on universal design for learning, implementation, planning, and practice, and giving our teachers time to look at resources and work together to you know, see what it looks like when you're actually planning universally. or adopting certain universal practices to current curriculum and lesson design. And the second is a focus on something that we've talked about quite a bit here is social emotional learning uh, throughout the district, making sure that that's not just something that falls into the laps of 
um, you know, our school psychologist, our, um, you know, specialized um, providers or our counseling staff, but something that as, um, you know, uh, tier one classroom leaders, teachers, paraprofessionals, we all take some responsibility for knowing more about what that looks like and knowing where we can assist in that process as well. And again, these are informational, but also um, they're still in development, but there will be a workshop component where teachers actually have time to look at resources, work together, and ask questions and plan some of these things for their classrooms. <clears throat> That's it for me. Are there any questions? This is great. You know I like this. You do? Position. Yeah, so there's two of us at least. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Mr. Woodlock, if you can jump into the drive back up and pull up 10A. Yes. Uh, is it this? This is it. All right. I'm, sure, I'm sorry, I'm just nope, gonna keep go going to yes, right, keep so, going. So the next thing on the agenda is approval for uh, travel for 23-24. Uh, Mr. Rogan's here to talk about two opportunities for kids, give kids the world, and potentially <coughs> going back to international travel. I know, Mr. Rogan, we haven't done that in a couple of years, so why don't you talk a little bit about the history there as well. Yep. Uh, so first, we'll just go over Give Kids the World. Uh, that trip happened earlier this year. Um, it was a great trip again, so we're just looking for approval for that. Uh, this past year, it was $1,800. Um, We'll look to travel in November or December this upcoming year. You can't book until um, six months out, so we have to wait on that. But um, we once again would love to give our, our students that opportunity to head down to Florida to, to take um, that experience in as a whole again. So, um, As for the Italy trip, so the last international trip we went on was to Germany, uh, Switzerland, and Austria. It was uh, last year. It was finally able to take place. It was postponed, obviously, due to COVID. Um, we had a number of seniors that were unable to travel, that we had to work with um, EF Tours to try to recover a lot of that, that money, which we were able to do a pretty good job of and still off of the trip those following years. Um, it was a great experience. There were some things that we had to worry about in regards to testing and things like that, but it, it appears that most of that is gone now. So um, they still do have some policies and procedures in place that we are working with them on. Um, so people have a clear understanding of that stuff, but overall, um, we are looking to move forward with the trip again. So earlier this year, I put out a poll to um, current freshmen, sophomores, and juniors because that's who the trip would be open to. Um, they had the opportunity to vote for Italy, Costa Rica, Ireland, or add another category. Um, and Italy just edged out um, Costa Rica by 4%. So um, I'm here tonight to kind of look for approval to move forward to kind of start planning that. We'd be looking to go um, in... April of April vacation of next year. Um, there'll be a little bit of overlap with, with uh, two to three school days, which we've done in past years as well, um, but then also they'll be back before the end there. Great. Are there any questions from <coughs> Mr. Ogden? No? I'll, um, I'll seek a motion to approve the two field trips as presented by Mr. Ogden. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That carries six zero zero. Thanks, Mr. Ogden. Thank you. And uh, moving on to the student athlete presentation, Mr. Ogden, you're still up. I'm still up. Yes. Yeah. Um, so again, thank you for having us here tonight. Um, I it was a month ago. I believe it was about a month ago. Um, Ryan had came around to her in the building, and we were trying to think of different groups that could be recognized and talk about their experience here at, at Tingsboro High. And student athletes popped in our minds. Um, yes, they they do get a lot of publicity and um, are, are front and center a lot, but they don't actually get to talk. It's usually just what they do on the court. So we're going to get to hear from them today. Um, first, I'm going to invite Jimmy O'Keefe and Carly Demento up. Yeah, just slide up. Um, they are our, no, bring the chair. They're our <laughs> current uh, student ambassadors. So the MIA and Midwatch, and the Midwatch in, in particular, our league, has really made a push to go beyond the athlete. They want to educate and give students opportunities, leadership opportunities, and team building opportunities. Um, so both of them have attended multiple events, which you can see on that slide, and they're going to speak to that. Uh, I'm Jimmy O'Keefe, uh, class of 23, student MIA ambassador. Um, over the past two years, I'm just going to start with the Sportsmanship Summit. I, I've been fortunate enough to attend uh, at Gillette Stadium over the past two years with other student athlete leaders from across the state. Uh, each time we were welcomed with a different experience, whether it was based on leadership, our futures, teamwork, or uh, student and coaching biases. 
We learn many different qualities and skills that we can all improve on within our teams and in ourselves. Uh, starting with this year, or last year, excuse me, we focused on leadership and teamwork. We ha were brought into a uh, former professional Olympic handball player, and she spoke to us on the qualities of leadership particularly. Uh, we learned how to lead and work hard and come across with positive influence on our teammates, coaches, and other athletes around. <clears throat> Following that meeting, we worked with other student athletes that were attending Gillette Stadium with us in teamwork and bonding uh, activities with kids we've never even met before. So it's pretty cool to meet kids across the state uh, and work with them on teams who you're usually competing against. Uh, this year, a professional, former professional basketball player Amari Pearson came in and he talked to us about preparing for our futures. Uh, we talked through professions, majors, and colleges, and more. He outlined the importance of different aspects of colleges as well and where to attend based on what you're looking to do in your future. Um, at the time, I had already done all my college preparation, but I could tell that uh, all the other students younger, in younger grades were really benefited by the experience, and it was just good for the, to see. I'm Carly Demento. Um, I'm also an MIA student ambassador. And I'm also going to be giving Reese Graham's speech because he couldn't be here because of a lacrosse game. But um, this most previous workshop that we went to, which was in February, uh, a guy came in and he talked about mostly what things you post online, how they can get back to you, and how you have to be careful about the things that you put out to social media because you never knew, like never know who you could see them. And then he also had us with in a big circle with all different athletes in the Midwatch League, and we all gave examples of people we knew or people we heard of that have gotten in trouble or scholarships taken away from these actions on social media, and just gave us a bunch of examples. And then I'm also going to talk about the MIA meeting we had this fall. During this meeting, a woman came in, and right off the bat, she had us get in a large circle and put green tape all around the circle, different sectioned off. And there was one short, so one person was going to be without tape that they could stand on. And we were all in a big circle, and the person in the middle would give a category. And basically, if you fit that category, you'd have to run to a different spot in the circle. And if you were left without a tape, it was your turn to say a category. And this was just, I feel like, to get comfortable with your peers and also show a little competitiveness while you're there and play fun activities. She also talked about talked to us about, she also, sorry. <laughs> Throughout the day, we did many more activities such as motivating chants that our crowd can do and our fan sections can do that aren't attacking the other teams or attacking or attacking the other players and to get our team more energized. And she also had us get partnered up and switch around with different partners from players and athletes from different teams and learn how to motivate each other positively while the other person had to do multiple exercises. And then just to speak on like upcoming events, last year we did a uh, ninja warrior course type of thing, uh, which we are going to be able to get to do this year again, which is just uh, again working with other kids um, across the state, uh, mid-watch actually, um, just to build team, team bonding, and it should be a good time. So that. And then also the National Girls and Women's in Sports Day is being held at Banyol Hall in Boston. Miss um, Palumbo each year takes a couple of our student, female student athletes down there, um, which is usually a great day. Great. So now uh, we're going to have the opportunity. Of Can we ask them questions oh, before absolutely. they leave? If anyone has any. Oh, I have questions. So, <laughs> you can tell by his face. Oh, yeah. So, it's, it's Jimmy, Carly, and Reese. Are you the three ambassadors? And Katie O'Keefe. Okay. She's the freshman ambassador. I know who Katie is. Um, so, you guys go to the summit, you learn, you're the team bonding. When you come back, are you presenting to your teammates on what you learned? You know, did you bring back the lyrics for the chance to give to all the parents? You know, it, it, is the rest of the athletic department benefiting? from you guys going to these summits, I guess is really the question. Uh, right, so uh, I think it's more to like incorporate, it not, it's not really a presentation, but like to take back to your team. For like the leadership, for example, uh, I would take it back for basketball and we can approach things different ways or um, 
And then in the chance, we were, uh, I was able to attend a bunch of the girls' basketball games, sticking in that section, and then lead positive chance with, uh, uh, with our friends instead of attacking against the other players, more leading by example and showing like, what you've learned um, physically instead of presenting. In another, another part of like the meetings that we went to, they would try and think of ideas of how to get different groups to go to different events, like posting things on social media or how to get people interested, such as different programs that aren't just athletes, but also theater or people who don't participate in after school activities still wanting to come and support their team. Do you feel you're better leaders after the summit? Yeah, I mean, I think um, it just having the additional knowledge is good to like think back on to use. Yeah, every time we go, we get like different examples of things that have happened and have happened to people that like us, like, for example, posting the stuff on social media. So every time we go, I feel like we're taking something away. Thank you. I would hope that that social media one is something that's pretty widely spread and shared throughout our athletic teams here. So that, that is a, a real thing. Uh, you know, your, your coaches want to know what your digital footprint is. The second you talk to a college coach, they wouldn't want to see your social media accounts. So I hope we're really cognizant and mindful of that. Uh, I just had one question, if I may. Did you make any connections down there with students throughout the state that you're still in touch with, that you have built some kind of rapport and relationship with? I have, personally. Um, a girl we play on Littleton, which is one of our biggest rivals in basketball, She's a really great p player, one of the best shooters in the league. And we actually, she actually texted me like when we got to Worcester State and wished me good luck and on Instagram. So we've talked a few times, but it's been really nice to like be able to connect with the other people and not just playing against the team. That's awesome. Yeah, same here. Uh, definitely, I'd say football, especially because I get to see the guys without helmets on. And then after the game, you see them again. They're like, oh, I met you the other day. Uh, last year, specifically. I met the quarterback from Oakmont, I think, the day before we played them. And then it was, uh, it was pretty cool to talk to him after the game. It was a close game, so it was good. That's great. Any other questions? Thank you. Um, so now we're going to give our spring captains the opportunity to come up, and in the order that's listed there, kind of just to say what they're looking forward to this season, what their expectations are, and share any other info they'd like. Um, I think it says a lot about them being leaders and captains just with how many are here. Um, so we'll go through that, but it's, uh, I'm impressed by that alone. That a couple even just came back from a scrimmage, so rushed back in. Hi, um, I'm Izzy Schaefer, and you already know Carly. Um, so this year for softball, um, we are really focusing as a team on accountability and also being able to encourage each other um, through our weaknesses and our strengths. Um, something that we did over this past weekend actually is everybody in our program, the varsity and the JV girls, we all took this um, mental strength Test, mental basically. toughness, mental toughness, mental toughness, and and basically it gives you results on like, and it tells you what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. And later this week, we're going to um, actually get together and pair up based on like, maybe like my weakness is where Carly's strength is, and like vice versa. And we become accountability partners. And so basically, what we're going to be doing is um, kind of like helping out each other to um, become better players and better teammates in general, um, which I'm really excited for because we've got a really good group of girls this year, a lot of returning players and a lot of new faces and everyone's super talented. So I'm just really looking forward for this year. So um, We're also going to be doing pump up buddies, which we've done in the past, which is you get like the captains will send out, will pick out of a hat or something. So, uh, a teammate gets a pump up buddy. And it's usually switched up every week, or we'll do it like once a week. And you go like say to the gas station before the game and buy them like a Gatorade or sweets to have on the bus. We usually do it for away games. And then we're also going to be doing like big sisters almost. So we're going to incorporate try and incorporate the JV team more with us because we don't travel with them usually. We travel with the boys. So it's hard to be very close with them, especially when we're like practicing separately. 
So we're going to try and do that and do more team bonding activities throughout the season. Yeah, we're really trying to um, build the program because I know, like, personally, like, when I was younger, um, I was really afraid of, like, the older girls and, like, afraid to perform and afraid to mess up, and we just don't want that. We want everyone to um, be confident in their skills and, like, not be afraid to make mistakes because the older, per the older kids are there to help the younger ones instead of to intimidate them, so... I love hearing about the accountability partners. I think that's like a fantastic idea. I don't know whose idea that was, but you know, congratulations to them for thinking of it. And um, it's great that you're sharing that with your teammates. Thank you. Any questions? No? Sure. Thank, Thank you. you both. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, we have baseball. I'm, uh, I'm Nick Osiello. I'm a senior captain um, of the team. Uh, this year we're looking forward to, we got a lot of big goals this year. Uh, we had a tough loss in the state tournament last year, and I think uh, everybody's ready to get back to that point. Um, we got a lot of good kids, a lot of returners. We lost a few, but um, we got a good younger group of kids coming up as well. So we have a lot of excitement everywhere, a lot of people ready to work hard. Uh, with the team and then we got a lot of kids who were just at the middle school um, tryouts which is also super promising to see a large group of people um, coming up ready come watch our games and be excited about playing baseball so oh, yeah, I think the group of kids this year is I think we gel together very well it's a group that plays football together basketball together so we play almost every sport together um, I think we're very experienced and uh, Pairing that with the coaching staff that's been in deep playoff runs, stuff like that. I'm excited to see where the season goes. Good. I have nothing. <laughs> Any questions for baseball? Oh, great. You guys going to incorporate the accountability partners like softball? We might have to. It sounds like a good idea, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little brothers. Yeah. <laughs> great. Good luck. Thanks, That's baseball team. Luck, Thanks. Thank you. Uh, girls and boys track were unable to make it tonight, so we will jump to uh, girls lacrosse. So they, they did just get back from a scrimmage as well. So. Did you win? Sadly, no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Only by two. We're a younger group, so we're impressed with ourselves today. Um, this year we have only one varsity team, and the past two years we've only had a varsity team, which in the past we, when we were eighth graders, we weren't allowed to play JV because there were so many people playing. Um, so this year we have a very young team. We are the only seniors, and there's two juniors. So we played Bromfield today, which we lost by 10 last year and only by two this year, which is impressive because we have such a young team. We have some girls who have never played before. So... We're a really tight-knit team, which is awesome because we get to connect with the younger girls a lot. And we are also doing, like, sisters, big sisters and little sisters, which is nice to get to know the younger girls that we don't usually get the chance to have conversations with. Um, also, like, uh, we've had a league title um, for the third. We want to have a league title for the third year in a row. So we're trying to, like, that's one of our goals is to, like, work towards that. And, like, we had our game today, and everybody was just, like, we worked together as a team. And it was just very, it was very nice to see, like, all, like, the girls, like, the younger girls, like, they were touching the ball, and they were really getting after it and all of that stuff. And um, we're excited. We have a new assistant coach. Um, so we're excited to learn her new, like, coaching style and her methods. Great. Any questions for girls lacrosse? Thank you both for coming out. Good luck. Good luck on your Good season. Luck. Thank you. Good luck. Keep it up. We'll take it. We'll take it. It's tragic. I just did it for the whole thing. We have two of our boys lacrosse captains here today. Hi. So I'm Dylan Toronto, and this is Luke McHugh. Fortunately, Jack Michaud couldn't make it with us, but we're out here to represent. So lacrosse for the boys in – so last year was the first time we had a team in, I think, three years. In the past, it had been with GD, and it kind of it stunk that we didn't have a team here, couldn't get more people involved. 
and I think all over the board, lacrosse has pretty low, pretty low numbers. So it's good to see this year we brought up eighth graders to join our team because we just we need the extra bodies and they we think we get the more development that way. So we've been glad to have them all out there, and I think it's really bringing like a different dynamic to the team, not just kids you've played with your whole life and everything. But overall, oh, we just came back from a scrimmage as well. It didn't go the way we wanted to. It was a pretty it was a pretty rough, but I think we learned a lot as a team and saw that like. Once everything, once everything starts gelling, we could really be good because I'd say we're solid all around and it's just everything just needs to click a little. But also wanted to th thank you to our, our two coaches, uh, Ryan Crowley and Kyle Russell. They came out, they volunteered their time, and they're really just trying to make us better. So I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so this year is a lot of like big hopes for us because obviously last year being our first year back, we actually exceeded expectations that I think we held and other people held for us. Uh, we made it to both the state and central mass tourney. We first round exited in both, but for us that was huge because the first few days of practice we could barely even catch a pass, so big upgrades. And uh, with us, I think being a smaller team with eighth graders and a lot, not as many older kids, we only have three seniors and I think three juniors as well. So similar to girls across, our numbers are heavily in the sophomore through eighth grade category. And I think we have a lot of promise and it comes with like having good coaching staff for us that I think we're all really close with in a good way. It's not like a dictatorship, it's more of like a democracy in a way. Coach asks for input of everyone. Like, are you unhappy? What don't you like? We take criticism for anyone and we're all very productive with that stamp. Uh, and I think that's pretty good traits to have that. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to like build off what he was saying. Like our coaches really do get us involved. It's and it's definitely like a top down leadership style because we we talk to them, they talk to us and all we ask from the people is like respect as captain so we can just get practice going as smoothly as possible cuz we know that we could like in our league possibly go like very few losses. So we're just hoping we can play up to our standards and not let anything go by to stupid mistakes. Thanks. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck on your season. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have girls tennis. Um, all right. Hi, everyone. I'm Atina Jossim, and I am a senior captain for the girls tennis team this year. And one thing that I absolutely love about tennis is that junior varsity and varsity get to practice together. So we get to learn from each other, we get to learn our strengths, our weaknesses, and we just get to bond as a team a lot better. And we also do have a younger team this year. Um, we are the only seniors, but it's exciting because we have so many new players this year and they're all incredibly good. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just really excited to start off matches this year. Hi, I'm Janelle Cody. I'm a, another one of the varsity captains this year. And just to add to what Atina was saying, I would say um, mainly what we focus on during our practices is teamwork. So we run together, we make a playlist together, we pretty much do everything together, kind of like as a herd. Um, so it's really fun to get the underclassmen involved because we have a lot of sophomores on the team. Um, and in tennis, a lot of girls play doubles just because that's um, how the numbers work out. More girls play doubles, so teamwork is one of the main components that we focus on. Hi, I'm Meshwa. I'm also a senior captain. So as they were saying, we do have a younger team this year. So we spend a lot of time working on the basic ground soaks, um, serves and all that. So I think we're making really good progress, especially for our second week now playing. And we're excited to start matches, um, get out, go to away games and start playing with our new talent. I have one question for them. Go ahead. How are the newly resurfaced courts. They're great. They're can you perfect. tell? Is it, <laughs> yes. Can you notice the difference? <laughs> yes, we can. All right, good. Good. Okay. How many members are on the team? I believe we have around 18 members this year. So 18? 18, yes. Awesome. Wow. That's great. Well, good luck on your season. Good Thank luck. you for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Good luck. Then our finally, final team here today, boys tennis. Hi, my name is Trey. I'm the junior captain of the boys tennis team. And this year, we also have a, a low amount of kids, but a lot of them are new. 
So we're going to try to get the team's morale really high because that can just get us to our max potential as a team. Um, so we're working on unity. Yeah, and um, our team, like, we don't have any seniors this year. We're all really young. We only have, like, five people coming back from last year. So this year, like, the people who came last year, we're just trying to focus on teaching the new kids how tennis works, like, how to play it so we can, you know, just have a good time and get ready for next year. No seniors. No seniors. Wow. Interesting. How do you develop younger players? And this could be a question for the girls, too. Um, how so, do you get the younger kids involved in tennis so you have players in the future? So, like, we, we mostly try to, like, teach each other on the courts. Obviously, like, the coaches help us, but what we usually, like, near the end of practice, we split up and just, like, play some practice matches with each other. And while we play, like, me and Trey and some of the other kids who played last year, we just go around helping them, like, on their stroke, learn how to play, and just, like, yeah. Um, so are kids playing for the first time in high school, or do they grow up playing? Just, just the first time in general. Like, last year, me and Trey were, like, the only ones who played in, like, actual matches that mattered. So, like, that went towards our record. So, like, this year, we're just, like, trying to – most of the kids who are playing are, like, new to playing in, like, the real matches. So we're trying to, like, get them to stay calm, just, like – Thank you for coming. Um, thanks to all the teams for coming. You guys all spoke very well. Um, you definitely did a better job here tonight than I have, so thank you for, <laughs> for being so well prepared. Um, it's, it's a testament to our um, teams to have such great leaders, and I liked the theme that I was hearing of developing those younger players. Thank you for putting that mm -hmm. effort into those younger players. Um, you know, I'm sure that they give you a hard time, but they all appreciate it as well. So thank you. Good luck this year, everyone. Good, Good luck, luck on your season. Good luck. Good luck. I could, Madam Chair, just a big shout out to the coaches too. Yes. Chase yeah. put a lot of time and energy into this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ogden. Thank you. Have a good night. Moving on to the school choice participation for 2023-24 school year. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Every year, annually, we vote on our, our participation uh, in school, the school choice program, per Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 76, Section 12B. Basically, what happens is I reach out to each building principal and say, how many seats do we have available to offer to school choice students to uh, choice into the district? Uh, we look at the grade level and make a determination there. Historically, or in, the, in recent history, we've not opened any seats in the elementary school, uh, giving the staff and giving, giving some of the, uh, the diverse needs uh, of that building. So again, we won't offer any seats in the elementary school. But right now, uh, in consultation with Mr. Paul and Mr. Ogden, we'd like to formally offer five seats in eighth grade, 10 seats in ninth grade, five seats in 10th grade, 10 seats in 11th grade, and 10 seats in 12th grade. This is a program we've been a part of for, for many years. Uh, there's more additional backup in the drive regarding school choice, but we do need to vote this annually as a committee. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion? What are the class sizes roughly of all? You, you may not have that information now. You could send it out later, but I'm just curious how big each of these classes are relative to the seats available. So I can answer that question in one second. Sorry to put you on the spot. That's okay. <laughs> so currently, so for next year, we have 92 juniors. So they'll be seeing us next year. We currently have 104 sophomores. We have 117 freshmen. We have 133 eighth graders. Now we generally lose 20 of those students to private and or vocational school. And we have 120 seventh graders going into eighth grade. And those would be the grades that are impacted. Thank you. Yep. I will seek a motion to approve the participation in the Massachusetts School Choice Program for the 23-24 school year with the available seats as presented by Dr. Flanagan. So moved. Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Abstain? That carries 6 0, zero. Um, The annual renewal of the medication delegation 
Yes. Uh, that's a lot. So yes. it's another it's another annual requirement per Mass General Law. This essentially, this application authorizes our school nurses to delegate to do two things. One, to train our staff on administering EpiPens, and to two, delegate uh, appropriate medications to be administered by other staff members, i.e. Tylenol, aspirin, or something, if somebody were going on a field trip. If we don't participate in this or have this application in, we would have to send a registered nurse on every single one of our trips every time we left the district. So uh, every school district does this. This is just an annual vote uh, to formally approve the application and authorize the chair to sign it. Any discussion? I will um, seek a motion to authorize the chair to sign the annual renewal. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. That carries 6 0 0. Uh, finance, Mr. Messina. Thank you, Madam Chair. So for signing of bills, there were nine bill warrants presented to the committee tonight. Um, I do have them all back approved. As always in your drive is the list of warrant numbers, accounts, and amounts. For signing of payroll, uh, two payrolls since uh, the last time we uh, looked at them, uh, the payroll of March 13th and March 27th. And again, in your drive, the warrant numbers, accounts, and amounts. And just other under other, if I could, um, you may recall we're actually in the last year of our food service uh, agreement with Whitson's. Um, through the town's procurement office at Town Hall, we did start the bid process on March 15th. The bids were made available uh, to prospective vendors. Tomorrow at 10 o'clock, we are going to have a mandatory pre-bid conference and gives us an opportunity to gauge who might be bidding as well as those vendors to go uh, through all of our kitchens just to take a look at our operation. Um, any questions they may ask will be due uh, on April 5th and responses will be made by myself and the town offices on April 7th. The bid is actually scheduled to close at 10 o'clock on April 19th. Again, you can tell that the town pretty much set these timelines because that's school vacation week, which I would not generally do a bid opening on that date, but uh, it is hoped that we can review those proposals and bring to you on April 25th a recommendation for your next uh, food service vendor. And uh, as always, the process is very prescriptive by DESE. They actually gave us the contract document this year. It was a plug and play document to enter Tingsboro related information. Similar, similarly, there is a draft contract developed by DESE that we will enter in all of our information needs to get approved by the DESE School Nutrition Office before we can bring it for you for signature. So we're in that process and hopefully on the 25th we'll have a vendor for you. Do we typically get more than one bid on the school uh, cafeteria? So five years ago we did receive both Whitson's and Cafe Fresh as um, prospective vendors and awarded the contract to Whitson's. Um, as of this moment, I believe five vendors have pulled the bid. Whitson's, uh, Chatwell's, uh, who was our vendor many years ago when I first started here, and uh, Cafe Fresh um, also pulled, and a, a fourth company, which I didn't recognize as one of the major food service vendors, so I'm not entirely sure if they're a vendor to provide services or maybe a vendor that's looking to provide equipment to um, whomever the vendor may be. Okay. So four at this moment, we'll see who comes to the meeting tomorrow. Sure, great. Any other questions, Mr. Messina? No. All right, school committee discussion. Nate? Nothing at this time, thank you. Jeff? All set, thank you. Christine? I just have to say how impressed I am by the student athletes. They did a phenomenal job and I hope they have a great season. Thank you. Mr. Thank Woodley? You, thank you. Mr. Messina? Um, just wanted to thank the superintendent and the school committee members for all your kind words uh, at last week's meeting. Um, it's, it's a privilege for me to, uh, to work in this town and, and have a committee and a superintendent that's very responsive and um, can take action as needed. And just thank you for all that. Danielle? I just echo the thanks 
to the student athletes for coming out and just how impressed I was with how, how well spoken they were. And I was especially struck by their want and willingness to develop the younger players and see that they're the future of the teams and the school and um, that they're not just taking their leadership to the teams but spreading it to the student population at large. So just thank them for coming in. Right. So I teased it last week. Um, Jeff spoke about it earlier, Jeff Ogden, sorry. Um, I visited the schools, I believe it was March 3rd, so it's been a few weeks now. Um, one of the things I noticed is when I first joined the committee about, almost six years ago, there was a distinct difference between students leaving elementary school and getting to middle school. There's a gap in the programs. Um, and I think it was a tough transition. Um, some of the things we're doing now is we have programs that sort of cover that gap. And uh, Mr. Woodlock spoke about some of them last week, but one of them is the uh, illustrative math program um, that's taking a more holistic understanding of these math concepts. Um, I believe it's the second year at TMS, and it's been at TES a couple of years already. Um, so that continuity of programming across that um, school transition, I think is helping a lot. Another one is the keys to literacy that's in K through six, I believe. And moving up through the high school as of next year. And going to the high school next year. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, you know, where years ago, there was sort of that gap there and there was a you know, gap in learning. Now we have a continuity from elementary into middle, now into high school. I think it's just better for our district as a whole with the students, the teachers aren't kind of jawing at each other. I think it just makes everything much better. Um, the principals and the schools were really happy about it and really happy with the progress. Um, so that was the elementary school and the middle school. At the high school, um, lots of college acceptance letters are coming in. They're posting them on the board down the hall. You can see where everybody's going. Um, you remember we had the big tent during COVID outside and the students seem to like that. So instead of putting the tent up this year, they actually create a little patio area out there, put some tables out there for the students to go sit. And that seems to be a real hit. Um, I asked about the impact on sharing the gym with the middle school, because obviously that gym's coming down. Mr. Ogden said, very limited impact, it hasn't been an issue at all. I also asked about central office taking up space in the high school. Uh, Mr. Ogden said, it's not an issue at all, but I'm not sure if that's because Dr. Flanagan was with us, so <laughs> he, he might have been under duress. Um, and, and the final thing we spoke about, and we spoke about this, I think, at all the schools was, you know, I think it's great when these other groups come out, the groups of students come out. So we see the student councils, we see, um, you know, the bio builders, the robotics club. I mean, these are some really cool clubs, but there's a lot of more traditional groups that we never hear from, and we saw that tonight. Um, you know, I wanted to hear from the athlete, the athletes. You know, maybe theater, maybe some of these other, like I said, more traditional programs that never get the opportunity to come speak to us. So I, th I thought it was a great presentation. Um, I think all those students did well. I was a little nervous when I saw how many students were here, <laughs> um, but I think they did a tremendous job. I think every student who comes here continues to blow me away. Um, so I think that's just a testament to the job our teachers are doing um, with these students. So that's all I have. Great. Thanks, Ryan. That was helpful. That was a lot. Yeah. I told you I look like I have to talk a lot. That's good. Um, I echo the thank you to the students. Thank you to Mr. Ogden. Again, a big thank you to our coaches. They don't have to do this. They volunteer to do it. They may get a stipend or whatever it is. But uh, they put a lot of time and energy um, into these kids' days, nights, weekends. So thank you to all of them. Um, another thank you to Mr. Messina for another great year with the budget. Thank you very much for that. And Dr. Flynn, again, you and your staff. So um, that's it for me. Okay, sorry to jump back. Dr. Flynn, maybe you can talk about it. I know there was an award given to some of our coaches this past week for sportsmanship, I believe. Did you see that? Yes, yes. thank you. Uh, so I will speak to that. Sorry. Is it my turn? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Reminder, we have TMS coming to present at the next school committee meeting, and TES will be at the end of April presenting uh, as well. Board 95, uh, Board 95 is essentially is, uh, they're the basketball officials in the, in the greater Merrimack Valley area uh, and beyond, uh, Eastern Mass, really. Uh, and they, every year, have a banquet at the end of the year, and they pick uh, a program or two that they think represent the values of sportsmanship and the values of leadership. And very proud to say that this year, both the 
girls and boys basketball team were the only team selected by Board 95, and they were honored this past Saturday night uh, at Lindsay's. So thank you to Board 95. Uh, and I know that uh, Mr. Kelleher, Larry Kelleher, the former principal of this school um, and a, a founding father of Tingsboro Education, uh, was, was, is instrumental in Board 95. And uh, I know that he hopefully had a lot to do with how, recognizing our kids and, 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 and it well deserved by, by our coaches and our, and our kids. So that was great. Mm -hmm. And that's all I have. I um, I found it impressive. The students were impressive tonight, but also just the amount of athletic programming we have for our students. So that was um, six teams that were here tonight to present. We also um, were not able to hear from the girls and boys track teams tonight. So um, definitely want to recognize that we do have boys and girls track teams for spring sports. That that's eight program, eight, eight different types of sports programs for one season. So that's pretty incredible for a small town like Tingsboro to be able to support that. Um, so, you know, thanks to our athletic director, Mrs. Palumbo, as well, because mm -hmm. that's a lot to be coordinating. Um, and with that, we do have a need for executive session tonight to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation of an open meeting, uh, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body as declared by the chair. We'll return from executive session only to adjourn the regularly scheduled meeting. The action requires a motion and a roll call vote. I'll make the motion. Second. Jeff. In favor. 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 That carries 600. We are in executive session. Thank you. <laughs>